I always will be by your side. I always will be by your side. Love is a freedom that we won't be denied. I always will be by your side. I love you, I love you, I do. I love you, I love you, I do. No words I could say could be offered as proof. And I love you, I love you, I do.
open door. We want you, Lord, like never before. Your presence is an open door. So come now, Lord, like never
I'm not sure about you, but the thing that I'm looking forward to the most when we all get to join back together, which hopefully in the name of Jesus is soon, is to worship together with one another. But until then, worshiping with the gathering worship team will have to do. So thank you to our worship team who, as always, did a fantastic job this morning. I want to invite you to be generous and welcome you to the part of the service where we give our tithe to keep the local church going. We have four ways that you can give here at the gathering, and we invite you to choose whichever way is most convenient for you. You can give on our website, thegatheringfamily.com. You can use the Secure Give app. You can text to give, or you can choose to mail in your tithe to the church if you prefer that way as well. Each year around this time, we come together as a church family to give to our mission offering. This year, for the 2020 mission offering, we've chosen four specific aspects that we believe God has asked us to partner with Him to be solutions to these problems. We have our water well in Uganda. We have the Lord Child Food Pantry right here in South Knoxville, as well as trying to upgrade our technology for the Gathering Church and to continue to build the house of prayer right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. If you would like to give to our 2020 mission offering, please make sure to make a special designation on the online giving as well as a specific memo on your check. As we all know, today is a very special day. It's Mother's Day 2020. We have made a very intentional decision to do our best to celebrate the strength of mothers everywhere in our service today. We have an incredibly special testimony of the strength of a mother who believed who was faithful and held on to the promises of God when it came to her children. So I wanna invite you to sit back and stay engaged with our service today. And I am believing that you are gonna be blessed as we witness the beautiful story of a mother who believed against all odds. Welcome and happy Mother's Day to all the moms watching today online. We are in a very um, we are in a very crazy season right now. This is Mother's Day 2020, but it's also COVID-19. Um, <laughs> we are living in a very crazy world where everything is different. We are, our work schedules are different. Uh, we manage our homes differently now. Mm -hmm. There's no sports or entertainment going on in our world. Um, we can't even go out to eat for goodness sake. So <laughs> because of all of this and because of all the changes in, um, in our world right now, we know that people are living in a time of change and challenge. Uh, we know that some people are living in just very stressful situations. So we wanted to mention that today and just acknowledge that we know that people are living in a very different time. And um, our whole thrust of this day is to bring some hope and encouragement to moms, especially who are um, feeling the pressures of everything that is going on right now. Yeah, the mom's kind of the glue that holds it all together. Yeah. So as things have been falling apart over the last six, seven weeks, we're trying to get all of the pieces picked back up and all prettified. But uh, <laughs> if that's even a word, yeah, that is what we are doing as moms. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of stress right now. So really to encourage today is the goal uh, of this message. So um, there's a secret that God's given us. It's not really a secret. It's a, like a superpower, I call it. It's called prayer. And so when we really engage in prayer, um, God begins to shift circumstances. And Pastor Jean has taught us over the last couple of weeks the um, the power of praying prayers that are bigger than anything we can do on our own and that God is waiting to answer those prayers. We see it in the scripture over and over and over. He wants to do miracles for us, just waiting on our request. And the Lord uh, reminds me of the power of women in praying uh, through a scripture in Genesis 3, verse 15. Um, Adam and Eve have sinned and fallen, and the Lord is really laying out the punishment for the serpent in that situation, the punishment for the enemy. And he says, I'm going to put enmity between you and the woman. Um, so when I see that and read that, I think God's put something in us as women 
to fight a battle and knowing that there's victory on the other side and the enemy will be punished because we are fighting this battle. We are engaged. So it's this tenacity to pray until we see the answer. It's the power of an intercessor really on behalf of our family and other circumstances that we're praying for that we will grab onto a promise in the word of God we'll get a request from our best friend or a family member we'll take it to the closet for years and years and years the story we're going to see today I've been praying with these people for years and years knowing that God is going to do miracles in their lives so it's this thing he's put in a woman to see the battle through to victory on the other side. Yeah, that's good. It's a good reminder, Trina, of just this tenacity we have as women. And Pastor Gene has really been speaking about praying these big audacious prayers these last two weeks. And I've just been encouraged just to press in and go after some bigger things or even some things I may have just let fall dormant over the busyness of life. But one of the scriptures he brought up last week was Ephesians 3.20. And it's been one of the lead scriptures in my prayer life for many, many decades. And Ephesians 3.20 just clearly shows me that the prayers I have for my family and my friends, they're, they're not near as amazing and big as what God has planned. And Ephesians 3.20 says that he has exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can think or imagine, this work he wants to do within us. And as a mom and even as a wife, that has been a catalyst for how to pray for my family and even transferred over to my spiritual kids, so to speak, as a spiritual mom, just be able to know that when God brings me someone or they bring me, the person brings me requests that I can press in and pray and the, the glimpses God gives me, the scripture he gives me for them, I think, wow, this amazing scripture, but there is more. According to Ephesians 3.20, there's more than even I can fathom um, around that. And so I just want to encourage you as mom and women, moms and women to just press in. Um, I've been privileged to pray for my four boys, of course, as a mom. But before I had children, because we were married quite a few years before we had kids, I had John, my amazing husband. And one of the things that God taught me early on about audacious big prayers is that, April, you and I together with Scripture can really really make things happen, but stay to get, stay the course. And, and with my husband, I remember early in my 20s, just some days he'd, he would wake up and he would not really like the man in the mirror, for lack of a better word. He would, he would not speak so highly of himself and it would just bother me. And I remember God giving me this scripture, even in my 20s, saying, April, I have more. So keep praying. Here's some scriptures. Here's, here's some truths and some promises over your husband. And I would just watch that over the next several decades even. Just watch that shift him to become the, the great man that he is even more so because God had more planned for him. So I just want to encourage all of you women and moms that um, what we want for our family and friends, God even wants that and more. And to encourage you to press in and keep praying those audacious, big, prayers. And for me, just last week listening to Pastor Gene's message, I was reminded, um, as I already mentioned, some prayers that I've seen happen in my boy's life, but some that I prayed into and got scriptures and just kind of left. Um, and even reading the post that you're about to speak about on the, our guest, it encouraged me, um, along with last week's message, to just revisit. Holy Spirit just kind of stirred up in me and God's like, revisit these prayers they need to still come into fruition and keep praying until. And I'm like that mama bear when I have a prayer anyway. If you're going to ask me to pray, I'm going to pray until. And I, that's with my kids, my husband, my spiritual kids, so to speak. And so I just want to encourage you again, just pray those big audacious prayers or revisit your prayer journals, women, and see those things that have been amazing promises that we've just kind of let the busyness of life take over and just press in again. It's a good word and a good reminder, April. Today we have a very special message for you. We have some extended gathering family with us. John and Jackie Beelan um, served with us here at the gathering um, several years before they relocated uh, back home to Branson, Missouri. They have three beautiful daughters 
And John and Jackie have, uh, most of us know them and their story, but they have, they have been in some impossible situations in their lifetime and they have had to cry out to God, um, you know, to deliver them in some very tough seasons of their life. And even very recently, two weeks ago, God has reminded Jackie about praying impossible prayers. Um, so she is going to share with us here for just a few minutes. And we just want to encourage you, if you are in a season where you have been praying for something in your life that um, you've been praying for a long time and you haven't seen any movement, or you feel like this is just too hard for God to answer, I want to, you, um, to encourage you to just stay with us and listen to what Jackie has to say about this. My name is Jackie Balin, and my husband John and I live in Branson, Missouri now. We have three daughters. Anna Claire is 13, Ava is 10, and Allie Grace is 9. John and I met in Fayetteville, Arkansas in, oh goodness, 2002, I believe. Um, he was actually my boss. <laughs> and I was in um, undergrad and then graduate school. And um, yeah, we got married in 2004 and moved to Tennessee two weeks later and opened a business up in Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge and the rest just kind of fell into place. Our journey to becoming parents, my journey to becoming a mom, um, actually started in 2005. We had moved to Gatlinburg, actually moved to Sevierville, and started a business in Pigeon Forge in Gatlinburg and had that all set up and ready to go and life was great. So we um, decided year two into our marriage and a business that we um, were going to start a family and the Lord blessed us with our first daughter, a very healthy six pound, five ounce, perfect baby girl. So we had um, we had a difficult time getting pregnant with Ava, our middle daughter. So um, we're mind blown to find out we were immediately pregnant with our third daughter in the fall of 2010. We were coming through a season where um, life was really, really good. Um, John likes to jokingly say that everything we touched was turning to gold during that time. I mean, even going through the recession and um, it just life was good. We had two perfect, healthy baby girls, uh, had a healthy, happy marriage, um, great families. And then um, I found out we were pregnant again, August 5th, 2010 with our third pregnancy started off normal. Absolutely just like my other two toward the second trimester um i started feeling different so i found a um, sonographer in knoxville who would do ultrasounds that were not associated with my doctor's office and so we went and found out that we were having a baby girl and that was in um i guess november and she kept asking a lot of very, you know, looking back now, she saw something then. we just didn't, she just couldn't say it. She was asking a lot of questions about my pregnancy and a lot of questions about the growth of the baby. And, um, you know, several weeks had passed and we went to my regular doctor and then found out that things were not looking good. So we marched into November and found out that um, Allie had no kidneys and things were not going to look like we thought they were. It was in December of 2010 when we received the uh, I mean, horrific news. No parent wants to hear that our, our daughter was incompatible with life. It was just right before Christmas. And I remember the sonographer coming in and she did her scan. I had already been doing ultrasounds every week to check on Allie but she went right over Allie's abdomen and she just solemn, real solemn. And so, you know, um, they had already obviously, like I said, um, suspected that she did not have kidneys. And she got up and said, I'll be right back. And here comes the doctor. And he confirmed what they had suspected earlier and confirmed what I had already kind of picked up on by the ultrasound and just the sonographers, her whole body. 
they had offered the genetic counselor to come in and um, actually brought in several medical staff and discussed termination of the pregnancy and, um, you know, just um, told us that our baby um, would not be born alive. I couldn't accept any of it and I couldn't, um, I couldn't allow myself to go there and believe what they were saying. And so just the spirit of God in that room was so thick and the peace and the ability for me to just say, I'm, I'm not terminating my pregnancy. She is still alive. Her heart is still beating and um, we'll go as far as, as we can with this. And so we just marched forward from there. On January 11th, it became go time. Um, our doctors had told us if we even wanted to give her a remote chance, which folks, she had less than a 5% chance. She had 0% chance to make it through the pregnancy. And then if she were born alive, she had less than 5% chance of surviving just the first 24 hours. I literally had probably lost my faith for a few seconds because I had felt so sure that he, um, would have stepped in by then and um here we were and so <laughs> an hour later a few hours later our Allie was born alive she weighed 14 ounces less than a single pound um she was the size of this pencil or pen and she was born breathing and she was born with kidneys she had a very, 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 very long few um, seven months in the NICU where, um, you know, we received news after news that she would not make it through this day. She would not make it through the next few hours. She would be a vegetable. She would be on a ventilator her entire life. She would never walk. She would never talk. She would never eat by herself. Today, Allie is nine years old. She is the funniest kid. Um, we we laugh because she's still nonverbal today. She uses a communication device and signing and different things, but she um, she's truly the funniest person on the planet. She has the best laugh. She can outrun anybody. It's hysterical. We always say, yeah, they said she wouldn't walk, but she runs. I've had nine and a half years of learning the act of persistent prayer, and um, I'm no stranger to bold prayer. I think as you've heard um, our story, I've boldly prayed over my baby's life. I mean, I've been face planted on a hospital floor um, as they're coding my daughter. And um, I mean, I've boldly, boldly prayed for life, but I've also through the years and um, as a mom and just as a daughter of the king I want to encourage you and encourage all mothers that he is with you he is for you your miracle is in motion don't stop persistently praying don't stop boldly praying for what you are wanting and what you are needing I love to say that um, God is not scared of your prayers he's not offended by bold prayers he wants you and he wants that connection with you. Say happy Mother's Day! <laughs>
I watch them as they live their life and sometimes I, I want to step in, but I know that God is able to do so much more than I could ever do. And so today, Jackie's message was just a powerful reminder that I need to keep praying for them and I need to keep asking God to do impossible things for them and with them yeah. and their journey. Yeah, I think it's really an invitation from God that he's brought us into to really rise out of complacency, settling for this is how the situation is, or even giving up our hope on the situation and just learning to live without. God's inviting us again to stir up that impossible within us, knowing that all things are possible with him. So he's not angry at us that we have become complacent sometimes. He's, he's stirring us so he can do miracles in the situations around us. So we hope that you've been encouraged today as a wife, as a mom, as a woman of God. We hope that the Lord really has inspired you to begin praying things that you have never, ever prayed in your life. And we just want to end the message today praying for you and with you. So Father, we thank you that you fashioned women in a very unique way, Lord. And we thank you for the personality types that you've given us, the way you've created us to be unique and creative, God. So we say verbally, we trust you. and We trust that your plans are great. They're more than we can even ask or imagine on our own, Lord. So we thank you that you're inviting us in that miracles will happen because of the prayers of the women in the earth, Lord. So thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're inspiring us to take your word into the closet and to pray until we see it manifest in front of us. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you. And give you peace. The Lord bless you. And keep you. Make his face shine upon and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace.
his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children Each week here at The Gathering, we choose to partake in the Lord's Communion. We know everyone at home may not have access to the more traditional elements, and that's okay. Just find a glass of water or a cracker or whatever you have laying around. We believe that it's important to just do what Jesus said, and He told His disciples to do this in remembrance of Him. When we partake in the Lord's body, we believe what the Scriptures say. And the Scriptures say that through His stripes and by His stripes, when we partake of the body of Jesus, we get access to all of the healing power of Jesus through His act of suffering for you and I on that cross. How is this possible? I know this may be foreign to some people. It may be strange. You may have never even heard of this, but we have access to the healing power of Jesus, whether through our physical body or in our mental health, whatever it may be, because we now have a righteous foundation, which is the blood of Jesus. So when we partake of this juice or the glass of water you have in front of you, we are drinking of the Lord's blood. And when the Father looks at you and I, He sees us as perfect, as whole. He sees us as He sees Jesus because we are covered by this blood. So you may partake today now in the Lord's body and in His blood. We know many of you may have stumbled upon our stream here today by happenstance. Maybe a friend shared this post and you just happened to tune in. Maybe you grew up in church. Maybe you got hurt by church. Maybe you're not sure how you feel about God today. No matter what your answer may be to any of those questions, we want to invite you to be a part of our church family here at The Gathering. 
One easy way that you can do that or just get to know us more and us get to know you a little bit more through these computer screens is you can fill out a connection card that we have below in the comments section right here on our live stream. Maybe you have a prayer request. Maybe there's a burden that you've been carrying and you haven't been able to share it with anyone. Down below in those comments, there will be a prayer request form right by the connection card form and we would love it. It would be our honor to pray for your prayer request this week. So please do not hesitate to fill that prayer request card out down below. Again, thank you for tuning in today and we'll see everyone again next week.